Dear colleagues, in intumescent cataracts, if you don't do orexis in twist stages, if you try to do orexis at on go, this is what may happen. See, in this case, the orexis has run out. It is gone underneath the iris. To avoid this, what I do is, in intumescent cataracts, I do rexis in twist stages. This is a full surgery. Let us watch the surgical steps. The main incision, in this case at around 11 o'clock. Now this is a side port at around 8 o'clock. Now I inject an air bubble and underneath this air bubble I inject tripan blue dye. The dye is not diluted by aqueous. If we inject it underneath an air bubble, and staining occurs very fast. Within 5-6 seconds, you get a very good staining. And now the dye is washed out. I always wash the dye out and then I replace the BSS with viscoelastic substance. This is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. I'm trying to flatten the central portion of the capsule. This is another side port. And now this is my rexus. As I make a puncture at the center, see a lot of oily fluid has come out. Express out this fluid, hold this capsular tag with utrata and make a very small rexus. Antichamber is sufficiently deep to make this rexus at on go. And now I go with a Simco cannula and aspirate some cortical lens matter to decrease the intralenticular pressure. You may use bimanual irrigation aspiration if you want. To decrease the intralenticular pressure is the objective. And after this is achieved, once you decrease the intralenticular pressure, the shrew is stamped. You just have to enlarge this rexis into an optimum sized one. I take a vana scissor, go towards 7 o'clock, make a cut, make a nick, and take the iterator again, hold this capsular tag, go anticlockwise, and try to remain at equal distance from the margin of the pupil and thus I get an acceptable rexis. That's it. Now in this case I'm going to do a direct job. This can be called woodcutter's technique as described by Dr. Vikas Mahatme. And now I am going to chop the nucleus into several fragments. Yes. So the nucleus has been divided into four parts, and each part is being emulsified and removed. FECO power used in this case is 75%. Flow rate is 45 milliliter per minute. Vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. This is Oatly Catarix 3 FECO machine. Settings will be different 
in different missions. Now this is the last fragment. For the last fragment, you can use a posterior capsule protector, PCP, or you may remove the chopper, prevent the leakage through the side port, and you can confidently emulsify the last nuclear fragment. Dear colleagues, we must develop a rock solid balance in our hands. We must have a wide vision. We must develop sharp intuition to do safe surgery. My aim is to inspire you and I want you to be a better surgeon than I am and I want you to do at least 100,000 surgeries in your lifetime at least and in this case I am implanting a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens under irrigation I am using the irrigating probe itself for placing the intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Now you can see there are a lot of air bubbles sticking to the posterior capsule. Actually there are SPMC, there is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose also sticking to the corneal endothelium. So after hydrating the side ports, what I am going to do is I am going to take the Simco cannula and I have taken some fluid, some BSS in the syringe and I am flushing the BSS gently towards the corneal endothelium and removing the visco that is sticking to the corneal endothelium. Here it is. The corneal endothelium is cleaned out and all the air bubbles that are sticking to the corneal endothelium also came out. And now the case is looking very clean. The antechamber is formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention.